I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. Ever since the new RoadShox series Harbor Freight off-road pod lights came out, I've wanted to test them. So here we are. We've got every single one that they had on their shelves. I went there personally, purchased it with my own money. It cost about $700. We're gonna start out with the individually sold three inch pods. I'm then gonna compare the three inch pods that came in pairs and they have this side lighting. Really excited to get into that. And then over here, we've got some four inch pods that I don't really play around with too much, but I hear that they're pretty good. And then of course, we had to test out their 7,500 lumen six inch off-road pod light. So are these worth putting on your ATV or your forerunner? Well, we'll find out in this video. I'm gonna lay it straight right off the bat. If you're balling on a budget or you're trying to find off-road pod lights for your bicycle, maybe this is where it's at. These were $22 each, so I don't have high hopes for it. I don't think the light output's gonna be very bright, but I'm gonna humor Harbor Freight. This is the entry-level pod light, and you can get it in either a flood beam pattern or a spot beam pattern. Now, a spot beam pattern has that centralized light in the center, and it's supposed to give you the down-the-range light output. That is for high-speed driving, whereas flood, I generally use that on the side of my vehicle to maybe set up a campsite. For the spot beam specifically, they boast 1,050 lumens and a beam distance of about 960 feet. At high speeds, that's not very far. It does have a color temperature of 6250 Kelvin and runs at 15 watts. Now the flood beam here is a little bit different. It says here it only produces 965 lumens and the beam distance is 335 feet. Same color temperature, runs at about 15.1 watts. None of those stats really even matter. How does the light output look? Is it worth putting on your vehicle? I'm gonna show you guys how to do the test real quick, and then we're gonna show you the light output. I use this. It's a digital lux meter, and it measures the actual usable brightness at a certain point on the wall, that point being the brightest point on the wall, and it's really just an easy way to compare one pod light to another. So I'm gonna power this up with a power supply that's just underneath this table. I think that's the best way to compare it to kind of show you what the beam pattern looks like. I'm measuring this pod only 19 feet away from the wall. So if you see really high numbers, it's just because I wanted to show you guys the entire beam pattern in this shot. This is the RoadShox spot beam, and it measured 870 maximum lux. It's really hard to look at something in a studio and say, that's really good or that's really bad. So I like to compare it to other products. Dial Dynamics makes a three inch pod, the SS3 Pro, and this is what the spot beam looks like. And as you can see, compared to the Harbor Freight pod light, the Harbor Freight pod light is laughable. The Dial Dynamics SS3, I measured 5,500 maximum lux at the brightest point on the wall in this test. Compared to 870, what a joke. But again, these are $20 pod lights. Since we test so many Morimoto products, I had some of the Morimoto 4Banger HXB pod lights sitting around, and the spot beam pattern looks like this. I measured 6,670 maximum lux way brighter than the 870 maximum lux. When you swap this pod light out for the flood, the RoadShock 3-inch flood light from Harbor Freight, I only measured 90 lux, and this is what it looks like. Now, it's a pretty basic concept to have a good, better, best model when it comes to off-road lighting, and I think Harbor Freight did that. That was their good, okay, in my opinion. This is the better. This is still the same size pod light. It does look a little bit bigger, but they still call this the 3-inch pod light, the very common off-road pod light. The only difference really that I could tell from this pod light and the ones we just saw is that it's got this additional flood lighting on the side. So right down here on this side and this side, it is pretty bright, I'm not gonna lie. But these came out to be about $89 or so when I purchased them. So they are substantially more expensive, but they also come in a pair. They don't just come with a single. While I was at Harbor Freight, they had a spot beam pattern and a flood beam pattern. But when I dove in a little bit, there was more like a low beam and a high beam on it. So let me just show you guys what the output looks like. Now the RoadShock spot boasts of 2,090 lumens with a 6,500K daylight color temperature. It also draws a lot more power, uses about 50 watts. They show they got a long distance coverage of up to 960 feet from the light source. Now the RoadShock floodlight shows 2,120 lumens for coverage with a distance coverage of 590 feet. They all seem to have that high impact polycarbonate lens and they're all IP67 rated. Now, thankfully I saw a substantial increase in light output versus their other three inch pod light. This is the spot beam pattern. I personally measured 1,820 maximum lux. 
That's much brighter than their other pod light, but it's a lot less bright than that Dial Dynamics SS3 I showed you at 5500 max lux, or the four banger HXB off-road pod light at 6670 max lux. One thing to note though, that side lighting is pretty incredible. I do truly like that. That's an additional feature that I don't see in a lot of off-road pod lights. And they actually really pulled that off. It's not quite as bright as I would like, but the width is where it's at. And if you're wondering, this is what their floodlight looks like with that additional side lighting. I measure 370 maximum lux, so compared to their other Roadshock 3-inch pod of 90 maximum lux, that's a huge improvement. I find it funny that Harbor Freight has been around since 1977 and only recently in 2024 have they come out with off-road pod lights. So far, these pod lights don't really stack up to the competition, but I know that they stepped it up to the four inch pods. Now, this is actually really, really big. And I know other manufacturers make a pod light that's four inches like Baja Designs, Dial Dynamics, and a few others. I don't have a lot to compare to this off-road pod light, but I just wanted to show you what came in the box if you wanted to spend a little bit more money and purchase this. This. The spot beam and the spot flood beam both came in at around $104 when I purchased it not too long ago. Inside the box, I did notice a couple interesting things. They came with the U-brackets, all of the, the mounts that you need, not the wiring harness. I think you needed to buy that separately, but they also came with this, which is an amber cover that goes on the face. So you can just slap it on and that's as simple as that. And now you've got that yellow light output. Oftentimes I see a lot less brightness in the light output just by slapping on a yellow cover but I'm interested to see how that actually turns out. There's also another cover that they have in the box. So they have two covers, the amber or yellow lens, and then this, which is a blackout cover. And this is technically the law. You need a blackout cover on the face of an off-road pod light when you're driving around. In almost every single state, I'm pretty sure it's every single state, if you have this mounted on your vehicle, say on a roof rack or a headache rack, you do need to have this blackout cover on the pod light at all times. I will say when I was making this video and I took this off and put it back on multiple times, it did feel like eventually this little plastic cover is going to snap. It didn't in this case, so just be careful. If you're gonna put these on and off, on and off, I don't necessarily like this style cover, but so be it. They call these four inch pods the Road Shock Edge. They actually have three light modes, so a little bit more. They have a daytime amber running light. They also have a low beam and a high beam. I'll show you that on the light outputs in just a second. They have a high beam max distance coverage of 3,700 feet and a low beam max distance coverage of 1,800 feet. They still have those little lights on the sides, giving you a little bit more flood on the sides of the light output. All mounting hardware seems to be included. If you're wondering about the spot flood beam, it still has that backlight, the amber backlight, and they still consider this a low beam. And they still say they have a low and a high. They have a low flood and then a high speed spot slash flood. They say multiple levels of brightness, maximum trail coverage with a single light. On their high beam, they show 3,050 feet of max distance of light output, and on low, it's only 650 feet. This is what the light output looks like from this four inch pod, the Roadshock Edge with the spot beam. This is with just your flood beam pattern on. I guess this would be low beam. I measured 2,140 maximum lux, and then when you switch it over to high beam, I measured 11,210. Is it bright? Well, yeah, it's definitely bright. It looks bright on camera. I wish I had more pod lights to compare this beam pattern to another, but at this very moment, I don't have any four inch pods to make this happen. If you look at the sides of the wall, you still got that side lighting like I was talking about. I really appreciate that side lighting. Is this the brightest pod light that I've ever seen? Well, not really, actually. I've seen more intensity at a certain point on the wall. If you check out our other videos, you'll be able to see all of the other products that we have also tested. For a company that's new in the off-road industry, they're not the worst out there, but they're far from the best performing option. If you put the amber lens on, it looks just like this. And I only measured 5,960 maximum lux. So simply putting this yellow lens over it and converting from white output to yellow, you lose a substantial amount of light. 11,210 all the way down to 5,960 just by putting over this little cover. This is what the four inch Roadshock Edge looks like with the spot and flood beam pattern. I measure 290 maximum lux, but that's again on their low beam or just their flood light output. It looks like this, 290 is actually laughable. That's not very good at all. With both of them turned on, you do get that piercing intensity right in the center. 
at 9,670 maximum lux. Again, you do lose a lot of brightness if you put that amber color cover on. It goes from 9,670 all the way down to 4,900 with high beam on. Now to purchase one of everything from Harbor Freight, it was about $700. This six inch pod light came in specifically at around $160. So it's a little bit more pricey than their $21 pod lights. Is it worth the extra money? Well, right off the bat, I wanna tell you, I have a problem with this. This product came out early 2024, and this product from Dial Dynamics that looks almost identical came out, what, back in NOM? This product has been knocked off, in my opinion, and I actually made another video on all of the Baja Designs LP6 knockoffs. So if this is brighter than this, I honestly wouldn't even care, but I'm gonna humor them. The six inch LED pod light from Harbor Freight does still have that daytime amber running light, that backlight, as you can see, with a low beam, like they say, and a high beam function. Switching between low beam and high beam, I'm not exactly sure how they want you to go about it because I didn't purchase the wiring harness from Harbor Freight. That's gonna be an additional charge. The high beam produces 3,700 feet of max distance light. According to Harbor Freight, the high beam, that spot flood, produces 3,700 feet of light, and their low beam produces about 700 feet of usable light. I do see three LEDs on each side of that pod light. Let's see what it looks like on the wall. At first glance, I'm pretty impressed. This is what the spot flood, or their low beam, looks like. I measured 4,000 maximum lux. That's pretty bright for a flood light. When you switch it to high beam, you get 9,060 maximum lux. That's really gonna give you a punch of light. So right off the bat, heck yeah, good on them. They've done a great job. But how does that compare to the Baja Designs LP6, the product they essentially knocked off? If you compare it to their combo beam pattern, which is essentially what the Road Shock Edge is, the Baja Designs LP6 was 7,970 maximum lux. You're probably jumping for joy knowing that if you purchase the Road Shock Edge, you're in good hands. Here's the issue though. If you installed the Baja LP6 spot lens, I measured 9,320 maximum lux, and you still get a flood of usable light around that hotspot. That being said, the Baja Designs LP6 is much brighter than the imitation crash. Now, because this is Headlight Revolution and we do lighting better by testing, I wanted to truly test this product and so I just left it on for 30 minutes. This is where Harbor Freight really lacked their R&D and these pod lights have lost more lux than I have ever seen out of any other pod light we've tested on our other videos. After just 30 minutes with their spot and flood on, so their high beam on, it went from 9,060 maximum lux to just 7,270 maximum lux. That is not good they lost a ton of brightness. I shut the pod light off, I let it cool down for quite a bit, and then I turned it back on, and then I put the amber lens on, and I measured 4,960 maximum lux on their high beam. I couldn't imagine letting this pod light be on for about 30 minutes and then slapping the yellow lens over it. You will lose so much brightness that I don't think the flood lighting on the side of this pod light is going to make up for it. Was the light output a major disappointment? Not really but I started finding more and more issues with this product and I really wanted to love it. Here's the biggest issue. That light output that you just saw comparing this pod light to the LP6 from Baja Designs, Baja Designs was brighter. Their spot beam pattern was brighter than this on even initial startup. The only issue is when we tested that product over a year ago, the LP6 came in eighth place as far as the intensity at a certain point on the wall. So. That being said, this is not as good as the product that came in eighth place as far as off-road lighting goes based off of intensity alone. The final issue that I have with the Harbor Freight lineup is that it only has a 90 day warranty. And if you're putting this outside on your ATV and then you go mudding all the time, you want something with a very good warranty. Off-road lighting companies are really packing a punch when it comes to their warranty, like Morimoto. They offer a lifetime warranty on their off-road pod lights. 90 day that doesn't really jive with me. Anyways, this is what it all looks like. If you guys are gonna purchase the Harbor Freight lighting, we are not associated with Harbor Freight whatsoever. Go to headlightrevolution.com, type in your year, make and model of the vehicle that you drive to see everything we've truly tested.